Hey guys, welcome to Test Tube Plus. I'm Trace. We wanted to do a special series on addiction here on Test Tube Plus, and today's episode is super exciting. I asked my good friend, biological anthropologist and primatologist Natalia Reagan to jump into the host seat because she is uniquely qualified to talk about all things addiction. So I'm gonna leave it to her. I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, thanks for having me. I'm Natalia Reagan, and this is a special edition of Test Tube Plus. In these episodes, we're gonna be talking about addiction. We're going to talk about what exactly is addiction, uh, what's going on in our brain of ours, and how can we actually treat addiction? Can we actually beat it? So you walk into a classroom, kindergarten classroom, ask the kids, hey, who wants to be a raging alcoholic when you grow up? I'm, I'm sure you're not going to get any hands raised. Who wants to be a junkie? Again, no hands raised. Addiction is not anything anyone wants to become. It's generally a result of a perfect storm of circumstances, predisposition, exposure, environment that lead to one, some of the most creative and brilliant people that I have ever met, that you've probably ever seen, to becoming crippled by substance abuse. So what exactly is addiction? It's a complicated question. And for those of you who think, hey, addiction doesn't affect me. I don't know any addicts and I'm not one. Addiction can mean a, a plethora of things. It could be sex, gambling, video games, food. Hey, most recently on an episode of Fresh Air, Buzz Bissinger, the author of Friday Night Lights, came out as a shopaholic. And his shopping preferences had a lot to do with leather that were also uh, tied to his sexuality and his, his gender identification. And it was very brave of him to come out and admit these things, but this is just proof that addiction is not just about being an alcoholic in a bar at 6 a.m. on a Tuesday. It can mean a slew of different things. So this is very important for you to understand. In this episode, we're actually gonna be talking more about alcohol, say versus, you know, heroin or cocaine. And we're just using that to simplify things. In this episode, we're gonna use a scientific lens to talk about addiction. Uh, why do people come and become addicted? What are the different ways they can seek help? What are most effective? And, and how can science help us understand uh, their treatment? And also, how can getting people treated lead to social change. So as less and less people become addicts or at least are becoming uh, recovered, how can that lead to social change in a positive way? As an example, less homeless people, less people in prison, uh, less police brutality, less uh, mental health issues. First of all, what is addiction? <sighs> addiction is a compulsive need to ingest either a substance or engage in an activity to a point where it interferes with your day-to-day -day life. That could be your marriage, it could be work, it could be being a good parent, it could just be, you know, your normal routine, like you go running every day, but you can't because I gotta get, you know, shopping or got to go have sex 10 times before I do that. These are things that interfere with your day-to-day -day life and once they hit that point, you can kind of uh, realize that you've become an addict. Something also that's important to understand about addiction is it doesn't, you don't have to be a daily drinker. It doesn't have to be every day. Time is not necessarily a factor. People have claimed to be addicts uh, of alcohol or other substances that go through binge periods that realize that, you know, sometimes they have a trigger and that will set them off. So just because you don't drink every day doesn't necessarily mean you're not an addict. So something to keep in consideration. So let's look at the different aspects of addiction. Addiction's not just a physical illness. It's not just a mental illness. It's a combination of many factors. Factors. But let's talk about the physical aspects of addiction. The most addictive substances would be considered heroin or cocaine. They are very physically addictive. Stopping them is very hard and can lead to very dangerous withdrawals, especially heroin use. People generally have to take either methadone or have, be, have to be monitored when they are going through withdrawal to prevent any sort of uh, harm to their body. Um, same with those uh, that have an addiction to alcohol, DTs are something that are very serious and people can stroke out if, say for instance, they've been drinking for a long period of time and then they just stop. So unfortunately, sometimes you have to actually wean yourself off either with alcohol or other drugs. So that's the physical addiction. And then there are some people that actually will walk into a bar per se and feel a pull, like an actual physical pull to, to have a drink. Uh, there are those people that, uh, you know, if they're driving in a certain part of town, say they were a heroin addict and they drive through a cer certain part of town that they used to score, they will feel that physical pull to that destination and, and hopefully not call their dealer, but you never know. Um, and addiction takes place in the limbic system of the brain. It's in the middle of the brain and essentially it's the reward system. And your brain has these neurotransmitters. It has right now about 100. Uh, we're finding new neurotransmitters every year though. And one of the ones that is most closely correlated with addiction is dopamine. So the thing about dopamine is it's released uh, even just when you're expecting a reward. So like for instance, if, if you're expecting a package, you're gonna get a release of dopamine even though that package doesn't 
arrive. Just like when you pull a slot machine and you don't get those sevens, you still get a release of dopamine. And in fact, neuroscientist um, Bethany Brookshire has said that the simplicity of a single molecule and its receptors is what makes dopamine so flexible and what allows the resulting systems to be so complex. So again, dopamine might not be the singular cause, but it definitely is associated. Um, and interesting about alcohol and how it is absorbed into the body and why we probably like it so much is it actually uh, it sets the balance of neurotransmitters and it actually binds to uh, serotonin and acetylcholine, which are inhibitory uh, neurotransmitters. They calm the cells. So that's why when you drink, you get this kind of calming effect. You actually feel good. It's really nice. And after a while though, when you drink a lot. And for those chronic drinkers that you see shaking, the reason why they're shaking and get those, you know, morning shakes is because the body and the brain is trying to overcompensate by, uh, because it has so many inhibitory neurotransmitters, they're sending out excitatory transmitters, neurotransmitters that are causing people to actually shake. So that's an, ex uh, an explanation for why maybe you see that old guy at the bar shaking if he hasn't had a drink for a while. It's scary stuff. Um, and so another thing to remember that addiction uh, is tough sometimes to study because addiction is highly tied to mental illness, whether it's depression, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia. Uh, so a lot of times it's hard to tell like what came first, the chicken or the egg. Was it the depression that came first and then somebody drank? Or did you drink, which alcohol is a depressant, and then you became depressed and you could become depressed because your wife left you, your dog died, you lost your job. I mean, it really is hard to tell what came first. So a lot of times when uh, alcoholics or addicts get treated, it's they're treated in tandem for other mental illnesses, which is incredibly important for long-term success. So what are other factors uh, when becoming addicted? Well, it's not just a physical thing, it's a mental thing. If you think about it, a lot of the things that uh, people get addicted to, like shopping or gambling or video games, are not things that you're ingesting. So there's a, a personality component, a mental component to addiction. Um, and that's really important if you think about it. Uh, those that actually have that uh, sort of personality, it's almost harder to treat. If it's just a physical addiction, once you strip away the physical drug and you don't have an addictive personality, you're kind of lucky. But if you have a, a addictive personality, it's almost like you have another hurdle to jump over. Um, but exactly, again, why do you become addicted? So you're predisposed, maybe you've got family members like uh, parents, uh, uncles, uh, grandparents who uh, have been addicts in the past. Well, that's nice and good, and that's, it's an important thing to know that you're predisposed, but if you're predisposed to being an addict, but you have no exposure to any sort of substances, uh, if you live in a dry county per se, you know, you're not gonna have, unless you've got moonshine at your disposal, you're not gonna have that opportunity. Um, just like if you know, you're not gonna be, try heroin if you don't live in an area that has, well, heroin. So exposure is a very big part of it. And then environment, environment is key. Um, the more we study uh, about alcoholism and even epigenetics and understanding how much the environment plays a role in how we are shaped as individuals, we are understanding that addiction is very much tied to how you grew up, who you surround yourself with, what are your day-to-day -day life's uh, what, are your, what is your day-to-day -day life like? Um, there's actually this newish idea. It's not entirely new, actually, but a new book by Johan Hari uh, talks about how basically the human connection, how human connection is key for basically beating and keeping from becoming an addict. His book is called Chasing the Scream, The First and Last Days of the War on Drugs. And in this book, he basically chronicles uh, his experiences of um, looking into why are people becoming addicted. And one of the great stories that he tells, there was a, a researcher named Bruce Alexander Alexander, who did this test with rats where he would put uh, rats in solitary confinement, essentially, in a, in a cage and have two spouts of, of one with water and the other one water laced with cocaine. Coke, essentially, <laughs> um, or the old style of Coke. Uh, and the rat would become addicted to the Coke and kill itself, like drink until it was dead. And that was uh, kind of like an eye-opening thing. Oh, well, maybe, you know, yeah, it's addictive, of course. Well, I don't know about you, but if I were in a cage by myself, day in and day out, with two things to drink, and no interaction with any other of my own species or any sort of enrichment, I'd probably drink myself to death, too. It, well, in this case, with cocaine. Uh, so he thought, well, this is a silly experiment. Let's try it a different way. Let's create 
almost a utopia for rats. He created Rat Park, which was this wonderful park with, you know, had tunnels and little, uh, I guess, topi little mini topiaries for these rats to enjoy. And so the rats actually had kind of a, a nice life. And same thing, had two spouts of water, one with water and the other one laced with cocaine. And the rats, not knowing what was what, tried both. And it turns out the rats actually um, avoided the one with the cocaine in it. They didn't like it. They preferred the water. Bruce Alexander saw this as an indication that uh, addiction had a lot to do with quality of life and, and enrichment and, and connection. And in another example that can bring it back to humans, uh, in Vietnam, they found that about 20% of Vietnam vets that actually were in combat became addicted to heroin. And when they came back, there were a lot of people that were afraid that, oh no, we're gonna have a bunch of junkies on our hands. Well, it turns out about 95% of those addicted junkies got clean. And they attribute that to coming back to loving homes, a good life. Um, they're not in combat. They had human connection. And of course, we all know that there are plenty of vets that came back and stayed addicted. Um, most of them did not have loving homes to come back to. Most of them ended up homeless. So that right there, again, is another indication of what connection really means to uh, overcoming these, these hurdles. Um, there's also the idea that uh, when you're in the hospital, I mean, how many people go to, the, go to the hospital for emergency treatment or just even surgery and have to take morphine? Morphine is highly addictive. It's an opiate. It's the same opiate, you know, in the same strain as, as, as heroin. Uh, and you don't see hundreds of thousands of people coming out addicted. A lot of people do come out addicted, but we're not seeing the whole population. Um, Ten years ago, I got hit by a truck, and I was in the hospital for a long time, and I was in ICU, I think, for about five days. And I remember I went off the morphine in two days, and a lot of people said, wow, you must have a, you must be strong. And, and it wasn't about strength. I mean, it hurt. It was a very painful experience, but it was about the fact I had people coming to visit me, and I yearned for that connection. I yearned to feel that I was loved, and that helped me get better. Uh, the morphine helped, but it wasn't going to solve the problem. What solved the problem was feeling my family around me. So I, I'm very thankful that I did not get hooked. Um, there's plenty of people who do, but not everybody. Um, so there is this quote that I really love from Johan Hari, uh, and he says, so the opposite of addiction is not sobriety, it is human connection. And I thought that was beautiful. We just talked about connection. Well, what also connects us? Culture does. We've got San Pedro cactus in the Amazon. We've got Christians and their wine. We've got Oktoberfest, for goodness sakes. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yes, there's a strong pull in our culture towards alcohol, but it's seen throughout the world. Is, is there actually maybe a predisposition for humans to, to want to drink? Well, uh, I'm a primatologist. I actually study spider monkeys, and um, there is a hypothesis called the drunken monkey hypothesis that is based on the beautiful spider monkeys that I study. And the idea is um, spider monkeys are frugivores, meaning they eat primarily fruit. And fruit, all ripe fruit, has a small degree of ethanol, which is alcohol. So there's this idea that monkeys actually can sniff out the ethanol in the fruit, and, and the idea is uh, ripe fruit is sweeter, it has higher caloric intake, and so evolutionarily speaking, it would be smart to eat this fruit because you're getting more calories, and you never know when your next meal is going to be when you're a spider monkey, so you might as well get it where you can. And so a study was done recently um, where they actually picked up pieces of fruit and those that had bites out of it, you know, they'd watch the spider monkeys take a bite, and 85% of the fruits picked up uh, had ethanol in them, usually a small degree, like one to two percent, you know, they're not getting spider monkey wasted. There's also an island in the Caribbean called St. Kitts, which actually has a large vervet monkey population, and they're not endemic. They were brought over years and years, hundreds of years ago from trade and, and well, specifically slave trade, and these monkeys came and they have flourished in this island setting, mostly because <laughs> they really uh, exploit the tourists, and specifically lately they're exploiting their alcoholic beverages, and they found that they actually have their, their percentages of, of what the monkeys prefer to be, whether it's a teetotaler, a moderate drinker, or an excessive drinker, are in line with human percentages. So it kind of goes to show that, I don't know, we're not so different from monkeys after all. Um, I like to think so. So if any of this is ringing true uh, and you think you might be an addict, I hope you realize this isn't your fault. There are many factors that go into addiction. Um, and nobody wants to be an addict, but there are ways to beat it. So if you tune in next episode, we're gonna talk about how you can effectively treat addiction.
Has addiction played a role in your life? Please comment below and be sure to subscribe to Test Tube Plus. And if you haven't already, please check out the great series Trace did on black holes. It is riveting. And tune in tomorrow to find out how you can treat addiction. I know it's a heavy subject, but it's a very important subject. And thank you for watching.